Hello, Temple friends, and welcome to Season 3 of TempleCast. I'm Jim Gennady, pastor of Temple United Methodist Church in North Coventry Township, Pennsylvania. This is Episode 7, which is due to be published on Wednesday, November 1st, All Saints Day. We'll begin with this prayer from MethodistPrayer.org. God, the giver of life, whose Holy Spirit wells up within your church, by the Spirit's gifts equip us to live the gospel of Christ and make us eager to do your will, that we may share with the whole creation the joys of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first scripture reading today comes from Psalm 144. We will hear verses 3 through 15. O Lord, what are human beings that you regard them, or mortals that you think of them? They are like a breath, their days are like a passing shadow. Bow your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so that they smoke. Make the lightning flash and scatter them. Send out your arrows and rout them. Stretch your hand from on high, set me free and rescue me from the mighty waters, from the hand of aliens, whose mouths speak lies and whose right hands are false. I will sing a new song to you, O God. Upon a ten-stringed harp I will play to you, the one who gives victory to kings, who rescues his servant David. Rescue me from the cruel sword, and deliver me from the hand of aliens, whose mouths speak lies, and whose right hands are false. May our sons in their youth be like plants full grown, our daughters like corner pillars cut for the building of a palace. May our barns be filled with produce of every kind. May our sheep increase by thousands, by tens of thousands in our fields. And may our cattle be heavy with young. May there be, may there be no breach in the walls, no exile, and no cry of distress in our streets. Happy are the people to whom such blessings fall. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. There is a form of prayer called the Collect. It is simply a prayer that is intended to be prayed together by the gathered faith community. Collects originally had a specific structure. They were one long sentence that began with affirmation of God, expressed a desire on the part of God's gathered people, and concluded with a Trinitarian benediction. Many of the prayers we use on this podcast are actually collects, and this next prayer is no exception. It is the collect for All Saints Day, and it comes from the Book of Common Prayer. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Our next reading is chosen especially for All Saints Day on which this episode will be released. It comes from Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 32, through chapter 12, verse 2. The author is in the midst of a long meditation on faith. He has discussed the earliest followers of God and founders of the nation of Israel. He makes the point that all the faithful who had gone before had died without seeing the fulfillment of the project. His list is like a who's who of the Old Testament. After listing these faithful examples by name, the author of Hebrews writes, And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release, in order to obtain a better resurrection. 
Others suffered mocking and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. And here is a prayer from the book Common Worship, published by the Church of England. Be with us, Lord, in all our prayers, and direct our way toward the attainment of salvation, that among the changes and chances of this mortal life we may always be defended by your gracious help. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our final scripture for today comes from the book of Acts. From chapter 8, we'll hear verses 26 through 40. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Kandake, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. And we'll close today with this prayer from the Worship Book, published by Westminster Press. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of prophets and martyrs, give us courage to obey your word and power to renew your church, so that we may live in the Spirit, sharing faith with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for listening. Temple Church continues to meet for worship every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. at the corner of Temple and Unionville Roads in North Coventry Township, Pennsylvania. You are invited to join us if you are in the area. If you are not, you can join us virtually via our live stream, which you will find along with all back episodes of this podcast on our Facebook page. We will be back with you next week. Until then, grace and peace to all. Upon a tin, st upon a tin, upon a, became mighty in war, put foreign armies, put foreign armies.
put foreign put foreign armies to flight. Stop.